Hey guys, so I am back. I know it's been forever since I've posted um, to YouTube and but it's for a really good reason because I've had so much happen the past year and I'm really excited to share some of that with you as well as a lot of things that I co have coming up. And some of you may know me, some of you may not. The ones that don't, I am India Paulino and I'm actually gonna run through a little bit of a background about me so you guys can get to know me. One question I get asked a lot is, what are you? Well, I'm human, but meaning, where am I from? What are you? Are you Asian? Are you black? Are you Spanish? Are you, well, I'm a whole lot of things, but I was born in Dominican Republic and um, I moved to the United States when I was three. We moved to New York. I feel like every Spanish person does. But um, moved there, and then we moved to Rhode Island, and that's actually where I spent half of my life. When I was a kid, I was into boy shit. So um, I remember, I thought I was like, I, I'm supposed to like dolls. I'm supposed to like this. So like, when it was my birthday or something, I don't remember how old I was, and so I asked for like a Barbie, and I got it, and I was like, what is this? And I just. I was like, what am I doing? No, and I gave it to my sister and she like beheaded all of them because that's what she did to all of them. <laughs> and um, I played with cars, I played outside, I played like cops and robbers, like. So it's crazy because as a little girl, I never thought that I'd be a cop. Like it wasn't like I grew up, I wanna be a cop, I wanna be a cop. Even though I loved being a cop and it was fun because it was something different every day. It's like I knew that I wasn't going to be a cop forever. Like I knew I wasn't gonna retire as a cop. I knew, I thought it was, I was gonna be there three years, ended up being there almost eight, but I still knew it wasn't gonna be forever. I would look at fitness magazines and I remember seeing this one specific photo and that photo just spoke to me and it just like fired me up and I, was like, that's it, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do it. And I'm not gonna tell anybody about it. I'm just gonna prep for this and I'm gonna make it happen because I have to. I feel like I had to. So fast forward eight years and here I am. I have won the most pro bikini shows ever than any other bikini competitor and that's crazy amazing. The Arnold Classic three times. Winning the Arnold in itself is huge. I mean, it's one of the biggest shows in the world and in fitness. And so when I, when I won that show for the first time, I was like, holy wow, like it was, I, there were no words. The second time, which was the most meaningful time, I had something happen that was very unexpected and it happened a week before I was supposed to compete. Um, I remember I was going to school and I got a phone call from my mom and my grandfather wasn't doing very well at all. And my grandfather's old, you know, but it, it just wasn't good. And he got admitted to the hospital and I could tell that my mom wanted me to come because she felt, I, she didn't say it, but I could tell that I needed to be there because it may be the last time that I saw my grandfather. And so I flew out to Rhode Island the next day and um, I saw him. Baba y pelota. Tírala, tírala. Usted no está fácil. I didn't leave the hospital. I didn't even go outside. Like I just, I couldn't, and I didn't want to. And I remember um, calling my manager at the time, and I said, I don't think that I'm going to do the. I don't think that I can do this. I don't think that I'm going to do the Arnold. I haven't trained. I haven't been on on my meal. I haven't even been eating. I haven't been sleeping. I haven't anything. And I remember his wife, who has always been like family to me. They both have been. Was like, no, you can do this. You're gonna do this. You got this. You're strong. And um, she's like, if you need to stay there, you stay there. But you will make this happen. I know you can. And I remember those words sticking with me. And um, I, I, I stayed with him. And I remember the, the morning that I, I flew out, I had just had this feeling and I remember speaking to him because I could tell he didn't want to let go. Like he didn't want to let go because we, he felt that we were sad and 
I remember just speaking to him and just saying that it's okay and that we wanted him to be happy and um, that he could go. And I'm trying really hard not to cry because like it takes me back. Um, but so I said that he could go, that it was okay and that he was gonna be free now and all of these things. And um, I remember we were playing music for him, like old time music uh, that he loved. And I remember I took my flight out and he died that same an hour after that, after I spoke to him. Um, so, hold on. So I, I, I went back home and I decided to do it. I decided to compete. And I remembered like just putting my hoodie on and like just he, like I could feel him. I could literally, like when I got home, like I knew we had passed because I could see him like in the sun, like I could feel him in the wind. Like I just, he was with me. And I remember talking to him and I knew that he was gonna push me through it. And that, and he did, like I could literally feel him lifting me. And I finished up that week, I flew to Ohio. I stayed in my room, I had this, this, um, ball that um, it was actually cause I might have a bad back and it was like a like a lacrosse ball and we were playing with him with it like he was just holding it and I remember taking that with me to Ohio and I was in my hotel room and I was listening to the songs that we were playing for him and just I was just in a whole different space like it was peaceful though like it was I was just so connected to him the entire time and so detached from the outcome um, as I normally am, but it was just different this time. And I remember going on stage, backstage, everybody's talking, I would talk and socialize, but then it was headphones listening to songs and just talking to him and I was holding on to that ball. And I remember right before I went on stage, I like put my, my hand out and I remember asking him to hold my hand and to walk on stage with me. And I, like I felt him, I can't describe it, it was like this, I, he, he did that with me and um, went back to my room after prejudging and finals came and I won. And it was the most like unforgettable, like my body, like I could physically feel him there. And it was because of him and God and it was the most amazing experience ever. And so that will always be my most memorable and most meaningful Arnold Classic win um, because it was, there was just so much involved and because it was my grandfather and because he was there. Although he wasn't physically there, he was there and he's always there with me. So um, yes, that was amazing.